Good morning from the West Bank here in Palestine. In today's video, it's going to be a, a, an emotional video with a lot of honesty and truths, and it's going to also state my opinion. I'm going to visit the Ida refugee camp, which is the largest refugee camp in the West Bank, housing Palestinians. These are Palestinians that have been displaced over the last 70 years from their own property uh, by settlers, people that have stolen their property illegally by every human standpoint, uh, including the UN. Their property is stolen and they were forced, or they are forced, into refugee camps. Uh, right before I enter the gate to Ida, which is adorned with the world's largest key, uh, we're at a very important point, this very spot. Uh, this young boy of 13 years old was shot by a sniper uh, from way down the street. As overwhelming news of the death of a 13-year-old boy, locals demand justice, calling it a cold-blooded execution. During the child's funeral today, where thousands of local Palestinians attended, Abdul was only an 8th grader at the UN school in Ida refugee camp. He was fatally shot in the chest by a sniper while still in his school uniform with backpack. The last few moments of his life were caught on surveillance camera. Now since this memorial has gone up, uh, you'll see that there have been other shots. A sniper also from the same distance has shot this. You'll see tear gas canisters have damaged this poster. Evidence of one innocent child that was standing here amongst his friends uh, when he was shot dead. Now as we enter, here's the gate or entrance to the refugee camp. Uh, this is the world's largest key. And it was made here uh, at the community center. So the key itself is very symbolic of the Ida refugee camp because it symbolizes those that were kicked out uh, of their homes by settlers sent to the refugee camp with nothing. All that remained was the key to their old house. Uh, those keys became symbolic in, in, in the sense that the refugee would hold on to that key knowing that one day, hopefully, they will get justice and get their property back uh, even though their homes have been demolished and, and the key will no longer function. The key, once again, is, is, is a sign of hope that one day they'll get their land back. This is a very important wall, although it's, it's slowly disappearing. These are the children that were killed in Gaza during the Israeli massacre in Palestine, July 2014. I remember speaking to the man that actually put this artwork together, and he, he was trying to figure out the best way uh, to lay memory to those that have died, the children that have died in Gaza. The biggest way to acknowledge the number of children's death was just to simply put their name in a number beside so each and every one of these names is one child that died in Gaza, July 2014. And if we go down to the bottom, I believe 263, 264, 264 children. Now, I don't speak Arabic, nor can I read it, but I can see uh, very similar names. So we'll assume that they're family members. So like one, two, three, four, uh, possibly five five family members, maybe brothers and sisters, or cousins with the last name, and you'll see that a lot. Um, these are innocent children. There's, there's no such thing as a guilty or, or criminal child. These are innocent children that are targeted, not only in 2014, unfortunately, every single day. The mainstream media neglects to show you the fact or the faces of these innocent children that, that, are, that are killed by snipers. There are watchtowers everywhere surrounding, right up there at the end there, there's a watchtower. Uh, and at the top of that watchtower is a sniper, uh, probably watching me right now. Uh, and, and when that sniper has an itchy trigger finger and, and wants blood, well, here's the community to shoot at, the innocent children of a refugee camp. Now the refugees here are not from other countries, they're from Palestine. They have lost their property over the year to settlers. We'll look at some of the artwork as we walk through the refugee camp. You gave your life for our freedom. Your memory lives in every inch of Palestine. So I'm here at a little shop at the entrance to the refugee camp where they're recycling. Um, 
horrible items that are used against them here in the refugee camp on a daily basis uh, to make beautiful things. Some of these items are meant to, to hurt and possibly kill people here in the camp. Before I even jump into this, uh, I read this also, the Ida camp is the most tear gassed place in the world. Where do you live? Live here in Ida. And how often, when's the last time you saw tear gas being used here in the camp? Like before two days. Two days. There was clashes uh, in the night, they shoot also tear gas. Yeah. Before like four, four days was like special forces, they came here and uh, start to shoot different kind of this rubber bullet. Yes. They injured two people and they start, the jeep came here and start to shoot like this tear gas and so many they shot here. This is for noise? Yeah, it's sound bomb. Sound bomb. A huge sound, you couldn't hear, lose your balance and the, from these holes there is plastic hard part hits the leg and injured. Without even without anything, it's heavy. It, could kill if they shot the it is very head. heavy. Yeah. Out of all these items, this is the heaviest. Yes. So this is a sound grenade thrown with the intention to knock you off balance. The sound is so loud, uh, but items also sort of explode from it. And the special tear gas one, this one. Because this one, it's made in USA. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, we when they shoot it and go, we take it, bring it to my father, and my father, he changed the subject from bad subject. So your father, this subject. is your father's yeah. work. All of this necklace, the thing over the wall, the wall, and the front eyes, and all of it done from this tear gas. So our timing is perfect. Dad and the artist is here. Um, what made you think of turning something as ugly as this uh, into items like this? Yeah, as you see, we have uh, we make it as uh, a message for the people uh, that uh, they are visiting our uh, Ida camp. Uh, so I show them how uh, we can turn uh, the something from dark to light, from something kill the people to something make them happy and in peace uh, and lovely. Uh, and it's it's hard uh, uh, work to do this thing. So I'm going to buy a couple of these bracelets. Now they're made from the tear gas canister uh, to support the, the shop and to bring some unique items home uh, to my children. How much are they each? 30. 30. So I'll, I'm going to get three for my children. I'm also going to buy two more and I'll find a way to give them away. Uh, for two lucky people that watch this video, so I can mail it anywhere in the world. So I'll get five of them. Uh, look in the description. I don't know how I'm going to do it exactly. Look in the description if you're interested in winning one of these unique items, uh, and I'll find a way to do it. Now, this was a very famous Palestinian journalist that was murdered by his Israeli militant. This video capturing the moments right after a veteran Palestinian-American journalist was killed while covering an Israeli military raid in the occupied West Bank. Gunfire ringing out as her colleagues rushed to her side. Shireen Abu Akle, an American citizen, was known across the Middle East for her coverage on Al Jazeera. Tonight, her employer says she was assassinated in cold blood by Israeli forces, citing eyewitness accounts from her crew, while Israel's defense minister saying it's still unclear if she was killed by an Israeli or Palestinian. It was never released the name of the shooter, nor were there any criminal charges. Innocent journalist killed on the job. Now we're going to walk through the refugee camp. Camel, horse, and bird, flowers. I often see this in favelas, slums around the world where there's no green area, like no grass, no playing area. They often depict like animals and flowers in the paintings. Looks to be another memorial of a fallen Palestinian, somebody that's died at the hands of military
if you look up, these are all bullet holes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. All I hear in the background is like signs of joy. I hear children laughing and smiling and playing. Very hard to imagine that probably within a couple hours, armed forces will be in here using tear gas. Us, uh, most of the people watching this video have no idea what it's like, including myself, to live in this manner where you're constantly in fear of your life and your children's life. As one man told me yesterday, when, when his children go out in the day, there's a real legitimate fear that he may never see them again. They could be killed just out playing amongst friends. And, and as a father from Toronto, Canada, I will never understand that fear. And, and I can't even imagine how that feels. There are two schools here in the Ida camp. And the one thing, I think this is great, that there's a new modern school. Hello. I think this is great that there's a new modern school. But what children really need is grass, greenery, flowers, air to breathe. This looks like a like a cage, like an animal. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Very similar to Palestine being bordered by walls in every direction. I have a feeling they're gonna shout hello again. Say hello. 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 Your name? Jade. Jade. What's your name? Hammond. Hammond. Me, Chris. <laughs> bye bye. Hello. Hello. Wow, there's kids everywhere. Imagine the children not having a safe place to play where their landscape is this and this and they are constantly being surveillanced by those snipers. Folks, for you guys watching this, imagine somebody watching you behind a tinted window 24 hours a day, 7 days a week with a gun pointed at you. For any reason they like, they can then pull that trigger and kill you instantly with no repercussion. Oh, that little boy just took a spill. You're okay? Oh, he fell. Alright. Your name is what? Yeah, hello. My name is Chris. Show, show me a trick. Show me a trick. Jump. Jump. No, jump high. Yeah. Yeah. You can do it. Don't fall. Yeah. Let's see, he's going to do a trick here. Go, 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 go. Wow. I can't do that. I can't do that. Let's see. No, no. No, no. He's better. Yeah, yeah. He's number one. He's practiced. Look. Woo! You, you. Pepsi, Coke. What do you want? You? They're small. This is no good for you. Coke, Pepsi. No energy drink. Okay, one. Yes. One. Yeah, one. Okay, go. Yeah. Okay. Here for number one, the change. For him, the boss, because he's number one. Yes. Yes, today is Saturday, February 18th, just before noon, and afternoon prayer is about to begin.
And if you're into history, you got it. If you're religious, hello. If you're religious, this is the spot. If you love cats, this is the spot. Hello, English, YouTube. English. Say hello, Hi. YouTube. Hi. Me, Canada. 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 What's this? Palestine number one. Huh? You, Palestine number one. Oh. <laughs> number one. Yes. Number one. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I'm lost now. Can't tell which direction I'm walking. Hello. Hello. You one. Pick one. No, no. You, you're one. Pick something. Go. Come, pick one. What do you want? What do you want? Pick one. Pick one. Look at this smile. So beautiful. Oh, yeah? yeah. Your sister? Yeah. Yeah? Oh. Hello. Yeah, no problem. One. 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 Very good. Yes. Oh, love you. Oh, thank you. Anna, I love you. Yes. Why can I take a like, share? Sexy bride. <laughs> <laughs> He's a professional, future YouTuber here. I gotta find myself how to get back. The key, the key. Um. Left of mark. Yeah, yeah. I have a tour guide. The key. Do you understand key? The big key. Oh, I do. The key. Uh. Uh, Just walking. Uh, Walk. Father. Your father? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Lots of children. Hey, good. Perfect. Perfect. What is your name? Uh, Mansoor. 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 Nice to meet you. Chris. Uh, Chris. My name is Chris. My name is Chris. Well, yes. Yeah. Yes. Dad, Donna, my is my dad, and now to sleep. Your house. Yeah, oh, your house. Okay, where you sleep? The school for for the school. 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 Yes, big school, big. Oh, oh big. very big. The core Ida. Yes. The core Ida. Yes. Yeah. Ida. Yeah, can I? <laughs> you look good. <laughs> look, you brought me a smile on my face. Look, right over there, I can see hope. Hope. Ah, Jesh. Hope. Jesh. Yeah. But here, this bullet. Smell. Oh, I can see the right uh, through the window. And what what happened? Boom, 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 boom. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Oh, 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 from there. He's showing the sniper tower up there, hitting the window, and you can see the the glass has been replaced and the bullet's gone through the window. This is your house. Bullet. Bullets. Everywhere. Bullets everywhere. Yeah. This your house? Yeah, you sleep yeah. here? Uh, yeah, yeah. No. So he's showing me different spots where the bullets have hit his house from the watchtower up there. No. Yeah, hi. But who? Sister. 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 Your sister is up there. Yeah. Oh, Jurana Bardo. Hi. Ooh. Bent Ami. Your sister. Uh, Hi. Hello. You speak English? Yeah, very. 
Yeah, Sister, sure. brother. Uh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> And this is your house. <laughs> yeah. She is professional. Oh uh, yeah. But she doesn't speak English. In a little bit. <laughs> What's your name? Talin. 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 Yeah. This is your house. Uh, right next door. Okay. Yeah. Let's walk. We walk. Yeah. So. I now realize that I've been to the cemetery before. I was standing up on the roof of this house, right here, and the body of a boy that was murdered came through here. I'm gonna look and dig in my footage to see. And we actually came right in here, and while we were here and the body was being buried, uh, bullets and bombs were flying from the Israeli side. <laughs> Fourteen. Fourteen. No, no, no. Uh, fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen. So the boy that we were at the memorial earlier, where he was shot. No, I'm okay. Uh, where he was shot. This is his resting place. This is where he is buried. The young boy. Look. 14 years old. Born in 2001, died in 2015. Mm, yeah. My friend, no more energy drinks. No more energy drinks. I do care. I love you. Bye. Say bye bye. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, security. Bye. You, you will find here also tear gas canisters. And this tear gas can. Gas canisters, it's always shot by the Israeli forces when they attack the camp. And especially from that military camp. You see that military camp? Where the blue gate there and the watchtower there. Yes. They usually open that gate and the Israeli, Israeli military cars and soldiers, they get down and attack the camp. So that's Israeli military camp. Usually they use it like to attack the camp and as you see there is watchtowers all around this watchtowers It's used like usually like to attack the Palestinians. My name is Amir. Amir. Nice oh. to meet you Amir. What is your name? Uh, my name is Ahmed. Ahmed high five. My Rezi. name is Ghazi. Rezi. My name is Ghazi. Ah, Rezi. My name is Aysar. Ah, Aysar. What's your name? Slam. <laughs> my name Okay, nice to meet you. Okay, let's walk. Let's walk. Walk and talk. Walk and talk. This wall, the, the photos for, for the Palestinian prisoners who are from Aida camp. Most of them, they are sentenced for life in a prison in the Israeli well, Give me an example. Like, what type of crime would they have commit or been charged with to get life in prison? Resisting the occupation. Resisting the occupation. Yeah. So Are all of these people still in jail today? Yeah, today. Like this, this prisoner called Nasser Absrur and Mahmoud Absrur, they are in prison since 1993. They are in prison for 30 years. And they are refusing to release them until today because they were like fighting the Israeli occupation forces and they killed one of the Israeli soldiers. Yeah. So in, in the community's eyes, these are heroes. They are heroes, yeah. They are freedom fighters. Yes, very They are important. freedom fighters. You know, like when an, when, when an Israeli soldier killed, killed a civilian, a Palestinian civilian, he will not like be sentenced or no, not no, be even No, no crime. Yeah. Yes. But if, if, if you are a Palestinian freedom fighter and you kill the soldier, they will kill you or arrest you for life in a prison. They are 10 years old. So not much yeah, older. Not much, yeah. So... He, he was killed, uh, one of the snipers uh, shot him on his chest and the, the bullet came to his heart and he killed and he was uh, killed directly. Was there a reason? He was just standing here. Right. For the Israelis, as I said, for the Israeli soldiers, all the children, civilians, they are, are targets. targets. But I mean, for example, us standing here, doing nothing, 
would not be different than the little boy standing here doing nothing. No. Do these all. children... Even if you are international. Can you ask the children, do they, do they fear any kind of sniper no. attack? Do you think you know that you're waiting for them to come here and talk to them? They don't even think about it. I think they've they, been born into it. And yeah, they, they also they are, they are like, uh, you know, they're, they're, they are like born and raised like in a way that to, uh, to, to be resilient. It's horrible. So they are strong children. Yes. Yeah. And you, we are not like talking about any children. They are children who lived all the, like since their childhood, since they, they were baby. They don't know anything they, else. Yeah. Like literally. Can you ask them, when's the last time that they... There was an attack here in the community. Smoke bombs. They were playing there, and they attack the the, the 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 soldiers. They attack them while they were playing playing there, and he said it was last Friday. Last for little children like this. Little children. Innocent yeah. children. Innocent children. Being targeted. His his older brother, how did he die? He was shot once. He was shot once. He was shot by a rubber bullet. Yeah. He was shot by a rubber bullet. His older brother, how old is he? How old is he? Kadish Amra. His older brother is 11 years old, and he was arrested three times by the Israeli soldiers. And he was talking about him that he was also shot by a rubber bullet in his leg. Are their parents worried about them coming outside to play? Abu, do you think they are going to come to this area to play? Yes. 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 But they're going to turn everything around. And in the future, they're going to be lawyers and doctors and change the world. Right? You have hope. Hope is the, the word. Yes, they, are, they have the hope. I like this. Well, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. The sun is down, and that concludes my day and walk through the Ida refugee camp. Hopefully you guys gain some knowledge as to what's transpiring here in the West Bank. There are so many more stories to share, but I'm calling it a day. See you again soon.